Weather forecasts have played a critical role in many military operations, arguably none more important than D-Day, the first day of the Allied invasion to retake Europe in World War II. This Friday, June 6th, is the 70th anniversary of D-Day, and I thought I'd take a look back at how the weather forecast factored in. Now, in early 1944, Allied commanders had decided on June for the invasion. The full moon was on the 6th. It would yield the highest tides and the best illumination for pilots. So Eisenhower had tentatively chosen June 5th, if the weather cooperated. Bomber and fighter aircraft required a certain minimum ceiling. The Army wanted firm, dry ground. The Navy needed good visibility and, of course, limited waves in the English Channel. Three forecast teams, two British and one American, worked independently and then reached a consensus that was presented to Eisenhower. Now, in 1944, there was no satellite imagery, weather radar, no computer models. Even a two-day forecast was a huge challenge. Still, by 1944, the Allies controlled the Atlantic Ocean, so German meteorologists did not have access to as much weather data on incoming weather patterns as the Allies did. The weather the first few days of June 1944 was dominated by an upper air low in the North Atlantic with a ridge of high pressure west of Spain. The fast westerly flow between the two sent a parade of storms through the British Isles. Now here's a modern day reconstruction of the weather early on the morning of June 4th. This is when Eisenhower had to decide whether to stick with June 5th for the invasion. Now forecasters told him that another round of rain and wind would likely sweep over the channel on the 5th, but they thought a short break would follow on the 6th. So on that advice, Eisenhower postponed the invasion by 24 hours. As it turned out, the weather was poor on June 5th. The invasion would have been next to impossible. The weather on the 6th was marginal but tolerable. Seas were choppy and skies gray at dawn to greet the largest amphibious landing force ever assembled. But the sun came out at times in the afternoon, and nature cooperated enough so that the Germans, who expected an invasion only during a stretch of fair weather, were surprised. Their high command had relaxed and their airplanes and naval vessels were not ready. Asked later why the Normandy invasion had been so successful, Eisenhower said, because we had better meteorologists than the Germans. Eleven years later, in June 1955, Dwight Eisenhower, then President of the United States, gave the commencement address at Penn State. Recognizing the importance of a good forecast and knowing that rain was a possibility, Eisenhower had consulted with Penn State meteorology legend Dr. Charles Hosler, who gave the go-ahead to have the ceremony outdoors. That forecast worked out, too. Paul Knight will be back with the extended forecast next.